So I made this uh, TV stand media cabinet out of uh, wild cherry. It is uh, from a tree that was taken down in the Shenandoah Valley about 10 years ago and air dried. Uh, I've sat on a good stack of it for a while, not enough to make a bedroom suite or a kitchen, but uh, pretty unique wood. Uh, there's lots of character, lots of uh, figure. You'll see that in the video. Uh, the design is shaker style book match uh, flat panels and the construction is panel and frame joinery. Uh, the, the tip of the hat towards modern are the glass shelves, uh, which make it not only functional, but fairly easy to construct. I will say uh, I use a domino in this, and there's a lot of folks who don't like a domino, don't have a domino. Uh, if you get to that part and you're trying to make something similar, you can use dowels, you can use a spline joint, you can use a variety of other joinery. Um, pretty straightforward. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask, and good luck on your projects, and Merry Christmas. Like all projects, this one begins with wood. This is some cherry from the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. I think the tree was cut about 10 years ago, and it's from a local sawmill, uh, just a one-person operation. Rough cut uh, into uh, chunks that are a couple inches bigger than I need at this point. Yeah, turn on the dust collection, dummy. From there, it's on to the standard uh, uh, joiner and thicknesser. Uh, I'd like to use my, my fingers to tell the lay of the grain, uh, rub uh, in the, both directions and uh, run it through smooth side towards the blade. I always check the uh, joiner pence before using it. I don't, I don't know that it ever changes, but I think it's a habit I can't seem to get out of. Some people mill to a specific thickness. I simply mill until all boards are uh, finished and uniform. Uh, here I'm splitting out material for rails and styles. We need rails and styles for three panels, two sides, uh, and one back panel. And this is the end result, uh, styles, rails, and leg stock uh, milled and ready to glue up. Like 99% of my projects, I've got to make legs out of three-quarter stock. So here we are gluing up uh, two pieces of uh, five-quarter, actually not three-quarter, five-quarter stock uh, to make legs. Uh, and when I'm uh, especially blessed, I do get uh, eight-quarter stock and can make legs without having to go through this step, but it's not a big deal. Those of you counting know uh, I'm making an extra leg. I've, I've learned over the years that uh, if, if you need four, make five, and that's the same for the rails and styles. But the rails and styles are essential. You have to make an extra of each of those just for your alignment process. Out of the glue up, I ran the uh, legs through the thicknesser to get them uh, uniform. And now I'm giving them a finished cut, squaring off one face, then using that face uh, as a reference to go ahead and make the finished leg. And while the saw is set up, I'll go ahead and cut the rails and styles all to their uh, finished dimension. So here's the end result. Uh, rails, styles, leg stock, uh, and extra for setting up the uh, 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 cope and stick joint. Uh, to go ahead and kick off the legs, I'm cutting a small taper, just cutting it at the bandsaw. It doesn't need to be complex. I don't think anyone's going to come up and measure to make sure they're all identical. And then it's really easy to uh, fair out that cut, uh, smooth it out with a hand plane. I do the slot cut first on a panel or door. Uh, some folks make the cope cut first, but it's just habit. Uh, remember to always keep your face down, so I'm always checking a piece to make sure uh, they all have the same down reference. I use a simple jig for the cope cut. Again, the face is down, uh, and the uh, bit has been set up to work with the depth of the cut made previously. You may build your uh, furniture slightly differently, but for me, a piece isn't ready for assembly until all four faces have been gone over with a plane. Uh, it just makes uh, sanding and finishing so much easier. Uh, so the legs, the styles, the rails, uh, all of it gets at least uh, one good pass until we're cutting a good shaving across. And when you do this, you get an idea how just far out of flat it was. 
To make the panels, the first step is to find the size of the opening and then add an inch and then subtract whatever uh, wiggle room you want. Uh, here I am resawing some of the cherry to make some book match panels for the uh, centerpieces. There are a lot of ways to glue up uh, little thin panels. Uh, the way I use is I lay down some wax paper, I screw a call to a uh, destructive workbench that I use for this purpose, and then clamp a, another call to the top with, with wax paper, and a third call to bring it in. That's a lot of pressure, a uh, very little bit does the job. I clean up the glue line with a card scraper. And here's a dry fit of the center panels, the styles, the rails, and the legs. And a dry fit of the back panel. Some of the book match panels turned out uh, amazing and that's one of the benefits of using this kind of wood. Uh, here I am putting the first coat of uh, seal -a cell and here's the first coat of armor seal. You'll note some uh, joiner snipe. I can't get away from that with such thin pieces, but I position all of those towards the back where you can't see it. The panels are glued up. The only challenge here is to remember the good face versus uh, rough face. Not that any of them are particularly bad, but I position all of the good faces towards the view side of the piece. To join the side panels to the legs, I'm using uh, simple dominoes, uh, four in each side. That's plenty strong enough. The legs get domino holes for the side panels and two legs get dominoes uh, for the back panel. Here I'm gluing up the loose tenon joinery that is the, uh, the result of the domino. I've, I've got uh, basically uh, mortises on the legs and side panels. I'm using hide glue. Hide glue, in my opinion, works a whole lot better for domino or loose tenon joinery. Uh, it doesn't put so much hydraulic pressure in the hole, and so you can coat the domino, put it in, uh, and get back to work. There, there's a longer open time, and I also find that loose tenon joinery especially cut with the domino, is sometimes challenging to assemble because there's zero tolerance. A um, you know, smart person would build in a little more tolerance, unfortunately for me, uh, that you know, everything's cut exactly where it needs to be, so sometimes it's a challenge to get the joints to line up. I should have done this sooner, uh, but at least before I glued the piece together, uh, I need to cut some uh, holes for wires for the media equipment on the two shelves. So I'm here at my little micro drill press with a Forstner bit. I have a backer board, so I'm not terribly worried about blow, blow out. Uh, while the board is still flat, I'll go ahead and drill the holes for the shelf hardware that'll hold the glass shelves. Glue up is a lot like herding cats uh, when you're dealing with loose tenon joinery. Um, I also had the camera die in the middle of this process, so I'll give you what I got. Uh, the end result is, is uh, using a long setting glue gives you time to, to fiddle and, and work it out. Uh, some of the alignment issues with the mortises and loose tenons were a challenge, but I got it there. 
The last part for the carcass glue up is the front stretcher and here I am wondering where it is at and I believe it is on the floor. Uh, sure enough, uh, it's not there. Whoop, pick down, pick it up. Um, it is the last part and once it's in, uh, the, uh, the carcass can sit overnight for the hide glue. That's the only disadvantage. I milled out four or three rather boards for the top and here I am arranging them so the grain looks uh, coherent together. Uh, what I do with two pieces I have to join is I sandwich them together and plane them together so that any angle off of 90 matches and offsets and it makes a great joint. I like to align tops with some sort of uh, structural fastener, so domino or biscuit. Here I'm using a uh, uh, biscuit and a 30-year-old uh, skill biscuit joiner. Uh, glue up and clamping is uneventful. Uh, you, I like to use uh, a balance between top and bottom clamps. I should have one more on the top, but uh, I guess I'm being lazy. I wasn't very careful with the uh, biscuits and my top ended up uh, with some pretty unevenness and blew up. Uh, nothing I couldn't solve with a lot of elbow grease and a hand plane. As you can see from the shavings, it, it took a lot of work to get it flat. I positively hate sanding. If I can get away with it, I'll, I'll finish from a plain finish. But in this case, I had to do so much work on the top that it needed sanding. At this point, I wanted to make sure that the glass fit before I moved on to finishing the top and the, uh, the rest of the carcass, because if I had to order uh, different glass, I wanted to know so now. And uh, fortunately, everything worked out as planned. Because I had to aggressively plane and use a scrub plane to get the top level, I do have some tear out or, or other minor areas, knots and punky areas where there was some rot. So I'm filling them with epoxy. And a good old cabinet scraper is fantastic for handling the epoxy, uh, getting it down to level. After epoxy, the top was finished planed on all four edges. The top got the same uh, finishing treatment as the rest of the part. Um, uh, general finishes seal a cell and then followed by, in this case, uh, three coats of uh, armor seal. The carcass also got a uh, seal a cell treatment to start with. The General Finishes product line does require sanding uh, between coats, uh, so I go over everything with 320 uh, and give it a good wipe down. This is after the first coat of uh, Armor Seal, and so really this is the second sanding. Don't try to sand too much, but I'm taking off the nibs and bumps. And the second coat of uh, Armor Seal goes on nice. The trick is to keep it as thin as possible. I like to hand apply it with a uh, white pad. The inside as well gets uh, the same finish routine and it's nice to be able to lay the uh, piece on its back. The top is held on by figure eight bolts, which I had previously attached to the carcass, and the uh, footage for that doesn't exist because uh, you can't record on a full SD card, uh, but I'm sure you know how to do it. For the top, I uh, positioned the carcass, marked, drilled pilot holes, and used uh, great uh, number eight uh, wood screws. I did have to go get some half inch ones because my three quarter would have been a little too long. In the home stretch, uh, I put in the uh, clips to hold the glass shelves and go ahead and test fit or final fit the glass shelves. 
They fit great, so uh, it's time to move on and put the piece to use. Thanks so much for watching. Here's the finished piece. Uh, best of luck to you and your projects, and may 2021 be an amazing year.